Hi everyone, I'm Yildiz from Yildiz Readings 5 Day. We're going to cover your astro forecast, covering all your romance, your career, you name it, we're covering it. Now we did have an action-packed October and we did have the full moon in Taurus on October the 31st. Now I'll be covering each of these within each of your zodiac signs. Please look at your sun, moon and rising. And if you do want to book a reading, you can go to the link directly below. We're also going to be doing additional reads during the month and connected in with this, I'm going to be giving you chakra updates and more. Now, we do have this month uh, Jupiter conjunct Pluto, and it's really amping off moving to December. So what I'm preparing to do for you guys is trying to get everything as organized as possible so you guys know what's coming up in your chakras, what's coming up in your charts, so you're well and truly prepared for each transit. Now we are having Mercury in Scorpio going direct on the 3rd of November and I think most of us will be relieved by that factor. We're also having Mars and Aries direct on the 14th of November and then we're going to be having Neptune in Pisces direct on the 29th. So yet again we will be glad that those planets are going direct. It's not to say we're out of the woods, but you know, most of what's really coming up is very much connected to our health with the Taurus uh, full moon that we had on the 31st, which again, I'll still be making references to it because it's still through the month will be resonating and connecting with your charts. And then we're going to be having a new moon in Scorpio at 23 degrees, which is the critical degrees, and it's on the 15th. But yet again, I will connect in with that. And then last but least, before we get into your actual chart, zodiac by zodiac, we have the full moon in Gemini at 9 degrees on the 30th of November, which is a lunar eclipse. And it is connected to the node. So we do currently have the north node in Gemini and the south node in Sagittarius. Now for each of you that nodal effect will take on a very different vibration. We're moving towards the energy of Gemini which is a transformative period which is connected to 2, 2.5 years. So there are themes that are going to be coming up and definitely it will be quite pivotal connected to this lunar eclipse in Gemini. Now it can link back to May when the nodes did shift where we did have a new moon. Um, at two degrees on the 22nd of May. So again, we will look at those energies and we'll tap into your charts and tell you how it goes. For those of you that you do want a reading, you can go, as I mentioned, to the link below. Now let's get into your messages. I have this distinct feeling, Cancer, you may be doing something three times. I don't know. Let's get into your read. Now, for the beginning of the month, well, moving rather into the beginning of the month, we have the full moon in Taurus on October the 31st when I'm releasing these videos for me in Western Australia. So it's going to be on the 31st. Now, it is making an interesting aspect to Uranus and Taurus. With this conjunction point, it can be something that happens quite suddenly. Now, this does not have to be a negative thing. This can be a very positive thing, um, providing that you have been tying up the loose ends, linking to your 11th house. There may be something that turns around and does a 360. Some of you could be working from home on your hopes and dreams and your endeavors, and this could really bounce off. Really tying up loose ends. Anything that's coming up in a tactile sense with... Um, finances, with beautifying, with working on that area. It could even be your own image that you're changing. Uh, subjects really linking in with the 11th house will be coming up, however. Now, <clears throat> this in the 11th house is a very, um, you know, your, your friends, your clubs, your aspirations, uh, your part in group energies, almost linking very similar to the Aquarius energy that we're moving into in 2020. Subjects to do with this, pay attention to it. If there's been something nagging at you at a financial level and it's been hindering your growth, uh, you may find tying up those loose ends uh, can really assist you. You'll find it will ease up as we proceed forward. There is a big element to do with needing to let go of certain things moving through this. When you do have that energy come through, as I mentioned, pay attention to synchronistic events. Um, unexpected situations can come up. Play close attention. I keep saying play. Pay close attention to your diet during this time as well. Uh, your emotions that come up, you know, really trying to replenish your energy during Mars retrograde. 
it, it can be really health orientated and a require to balance out all of these things that you've been trying to achieve now your chart already did have quite a hit over the last 2.5 years that's due to the aspects of where the nodes were previously prior to may um, and it was there for two two and a half years uh, we still have the saturn in capricorn jupiter in capricorn Pluto in Capricorn but you will be very happy to know that some of these blessings can be coming to you this month by next month we do have the um, the, the changeover so to speak with both Saturn and Jupiter moving into Aquarius which will lighten that energy for you for you Aquarius is going to be hitting your eighth house uh, really knowing what you're doing um, having to learn very um, emotional lessons and I feel most of you have already gone through this and that's why the nodal energy was there for you guys to assess these dynamics um, going through your awakening and your transformation eighth house is about joining joint ventures the viability of the situations um, you know healthy codependency who directly can I depend on it can be your partners and yours shared legacies and things to that degree but we'll get into that as we move further down the track the next moon we're having which will be almost mid-month it is falling on the 15th of November is going to be the new moon in Scorpio at 23 degrees it's occurring on the 15th 23 degrees is the critical point in astrology this is hitting your fifth house placement and this is anything to do with luck which really does make sense it can be children it can be romance it can be luck um, between the 15th and the 16th there can be subjects to do with this area coming up as well and it's going to be really important for you to keep your crown chakra clear uh, your your perception of situations can change especially linking to mercury in scorpio now mercury will be going direct which is linking to the new moon in scorpio so by the third moving forward we're also going to be on the 14th having mars and aries which i'll discuss in a moment going direct by the time you do hit the 15th you will have a greater ability to sum up everything in your mind of where you're going um, what those hopes and dreams are who you interconnect with and you know caution around birthing children as well there can be subjects to do with children coming up Scorpio is very hidden uh, you could even be keeping some of these things to do with um, your hopes and dreams uh, luck relationships your emotions really tap down until uh, after mercury direct and really going through the emotions and your psyche towards things so i do feel you as a water sign will be emotionally tapping in um, into that element of scorpio to really look at where your passion is look at what's hidden inside that you know having the 31st skeletons in the closet looking at those things maybe sometimes even having wounds linking in with that area uh, but very separately you do have uh, Mars and Aries in the 10th house so pay attention to the fact that although during this moon phase the moon would have um, taken on the vibration of Mars a little bit only because Chiron and Aries will be retrograde but Mars would have just gone direct so just go easy on it give it a couple of days and then when it does come to your luck and your emotions and the way you see things it can be very different by the time we move through that but it's a brand new beginning it's a brand new movement of all those lessons during that mercury retrograde and applying it the way you feel fit although i will be talking about the eclipse more towards the end of the video i wanted to just very quickly touch base with you guys on the basics of what's happening and what houses they're hitting i have mentioned it at the beginning but i want to tap into exactly what house that links to for you why it's important and then i'll hyperlink it into each section romance health wealth etc as I mentioned we're having the energy of the Taurus moon activating your 11th house it also does link to the fourth house so both home uh, maybe even wanting to buy a home one day maybe moving home maybe you've already moved home it can be Jupiter energy coming through hopes dreams aspirations the people you circle yourself with there can be sudden changes in that area finalizing it tying up bills tying up situations to that degree where you're looking at it assessing it and making those new plans 
as Mercury goes direct on the third, there still can be some fogginess. So uh, we, we tend to, during both Mars and Mercury, feel very confused. They can be cross wires. Work might have been a point of contention. Again, I will mention that further down the track. It, you could feel emotionally and spiritually like you had bad luck. Why? Because Mercury being retrograde can cause, um, you know, things maybe not being told to you. So um, lost in transition. I thought I was going to do X, Y, and Z. No, I was doing Z, Y, and X. So it might have caused a lot of frustration during that time, both with people you interact with, maybe waiting for information to come to you, information coming to you way too late in the day. Uh, it will ease up and that can feel, uh, it's almost like you feel you passed a karmic test. If you've been able to handle that at work with your friendship groups, uh, with uh, people around you with situational ships, it, you will feel at the end of it like, oh my gosh, I've made it through a storm. So it's, it's going to feel a lot lighter. Uh, you might use comedy to handle some of those situations, which can be really advised. But people still will be triggered much until about mid-month and into December due to the fact that Chiron and Aries, the wounded healer, is not going direct until December the 15th. We are also having on the 9th Venus in Libra in opposition to Mars in Aries. Now Mars at this point has not gone direct. So you do have, between your marriages, contracts, partnerships, all your interconnections, home-related dynamics, where you feel directly you are connecting to, uh, what you feel home is, maybe wanting to be in hermit mode with particular people, maybe wanting to be home and not being home, and your career sector. You may have had a lot going on. Uh, try to not take um, people personal around three days before, three days after, because Venus... Um, in opposition to Mars, especially in connections. Like, uh, even if you have the most beautiful relationship or you have the most beautiful career sector, there were real yin-yang effects where people weren't seeing eye to eye. Maybe there was too much going on. Uh, Mars energy can really link to masculines and it can be inside of your own masculinity inside your career sector, be it you're a man or a woman. So there may have been some push-pull energy trying to balance things out and definitely a lot of subjects to do with relationships, home and family, your emotions linking to these things, your beliefs inside of these things and what you were trying to achieve to create the balance and maybe where those wounds were. Now wounds do link to the 10th house. Um, that is going to be there for a few years and it's really going to heal you. So I do feel major growth in the career sector for you guys. And it will be different because we won't have the access of Capricorn there. We will have Capricorn in Pluto for about three more years. But because it will be hitting both you in a chart in a sense of having both uh, Saturn and Jupiter there, it will ease up and feel very lucky. Providing we're putting our best foot forward, we're going to have more opportunities to network, to bridge out and to do such. On the 15th, which I already have mentioned in the moon energy, we are having the new moon in Scorpio at 23 degrees, which again is luck energy. You might not feel that way so much. You might be looking at romance and uh, being more lighthearted, being more romantic. It can take a little bit of time as it moves forward. Um, and that actually can be jealousy because if you're deeply popular, I'm saying this to be marriage contract partnerships, if everyone's wanting a piece of cancer's pie, uh, th this could be a little bit tense and it's not that it can't be. Addressing everybody's needs can become complicated, but you have to come back to you. You can do the best you can do. And also making everyone happy is going to be a little bit impossible at the moment, but you could be very hot to trot and quite popular. You might not feel that way during this. Uh, but you can be very secretive and protective of your loved ones during this time. But there is this, <coughs> pardon me, ideal where you are moving towards owning your truth and moving forward. By the 21st, we have the sun entering Sagittarius. You may be looking at things and looking at your health, looking at your position in situations, other people's position in situations. If there's been conflict within connections and needing to end certain things, you may transfer things about and be quite healthy with your boundaries. When Venus enters into Scorpio, again, I feel you will really be quite protective of your intimate connections. You may be um, 
very private about what you are doing to protect yourself and other people. And if you're healing, this can be you really um, healing the heart, really digging deep into your psyche and looking at what your likes and dislikes are. Some of you, I do feel there's opportunities to conceive. Um, so, you know, if that's something you're really not wanting to do, um, do be careful because there's fifth house placement there. Uh, definitely, if you're launching something, there could be major transformations happening pretty much from the new moon in Scorpio and the conjunction points that are occurring this month. On the 29th, we are having Neptune in Pisces Direct, which again is very much linking to long distance travel and the 12th house. So it might be something that comes out of nowhere. During the retrograde, you tend to do introspection and then you go and move the situation forward. So you might've been really, really busy. You may have found that, especially because it is 12th house, it really does link to where Gemini is placed for you. Uh, looking at things, understanding, um, maybe having to process a lot. So I'd be very careful with your crown chakra and your head at the moment. Uh, there, there could be, um, you know, you could nick your head or do things to that degree. So make sure your fluid intake is um, adequate. Also, you can use uh, amethyst and clear quartz uh, and drinking fluid to maintain that balance moving into the lunar eclipse, which is going to be in Gemini. Now, Gemini will be in your 12th house for approximately 2 2.5 years. And it does connect to schooling, children, education, um, your local routine, the way in which you speak, speaking your truth. Uh, and I really did pick this as a large theme for uh, you guys. And I do feel you could be teachers. You will make great, great empathic teachers because you have that amount of empathy and emotional, um, emotional intelligence to a degree. You're very cautious about what you say. Yes, emotions can come up, but I do feel the older into the zodiac you get, you're more able to handle that energy. With the eclipse, it is hitting your 12th house. So you could have major downloads. There also could be something to do with car and vehicle and transformation. Look back to May. Think back to where you were before and where you are now. You may have mentally really had a chain of thoughts that you were very fixated on and where you were there to where you are now, although it's a full moon, it's really taking stock of where you are now, not where you were before. Who were your social groups? Who were the people you mix with? They potentially may have been in alignment with you or may have been an expectation placed on you. Regardless of how it falls for you, Gemini can be very social in nature. Uh, like-minded individuals will always love and respect your viewpoint. Um, if you feel that really in the past you had wounds, uh, I'm really seeing, again, this will be important inside your career sector as Mars goes direct. Looking at that and understanding that some of your really fantastic ideas could be really taken quite grandly, especially with Jupiter and Capricorn, conjunct Pluto and Capricorn. If you've got some mad idea that you want to provide to a boss, a loved one, or something to that degree, go ahead and actually call it out. You know, have a look at it and say, hey, I'm really feeling that X, Y, and Z will work better. You may be really well received, and I see that to be a huge possibility. Uh, those of you launching things, again, it can be a very exciting time. Keep doing things. Yes, balancing these connections can be, um, you know, very unique in a sense, but it will ease up as the month progresses. As I mentioned, for your chakras, because you do have Gemini in the 12th, you do need to make sure you have adequate fluid. You also do need to potentially try to do a little bit of meditation. And somebody asked me the other day, yes, sometimes we can listen to channel messages. We can listen to guided meditation. Uh, sometimes you just need some time out to hear your thoughts. Also be very careful with media at the moment. If you feel that there's an overload of information that you're having trouble sleeping, um, spending some time to have to think about that so you're not taking it to bed with you. So you're not finding that you're playing that broken record over in your head about everything you need to do tomorrow. Anything that needs to be done right now 
uh, what people said, what that routine is, you know, playing those things over in your head, overload of information. So really trying to create quality systems in your life to uh, balance that out so that your sleeping pattern is fine. You can, during this time, potentially have a lot stronger intuition. Your perspective and perception will be healing over the next two and a half years due to the crown chakra. So amethyst, clear quartz, and also fluid intake. Again, guided meditation and trusting the process. We're also going to be having heart chakra and higher heart chakra. And it's already oozing through your reading with the seventh house placement. So this for you will be deeply important. Protecting yourself uh, uh, connected to higher and lower frequency, I would highly recommend obstinate or tumbeline. Now, the reason I mentioned tumbeline is because with, as I mentioned, higher and lower frequencies, you have squaring aspects, you have the Venus element, fourth house placement, home paradigms, your psychology is connecting to it. If you are, in fact, dealing with um, a psychic vampire, so to speak, and this can be people and connections that are really uh, heavy on the brain, because you do have Gemini there. It is important to balance your heart chakra. So in Venus, it, it you can use uh, pink stones, pink gemstones. You also can do high heart chakra clearing. Using gemstones linking with Venus elements as well as tumbeline and onyx will protect you against psychic vampires with relationships. Now, we also do have with Aries in Chiron and the Scorpio energy on the 15th, solar plexus and sacral chakra with the growth factor if you can balance your chakras most most of this will be fine again if you feel that healthy boundaries aren't there if you feel really lethargic i'm getting into the health section in a minute utilizing these areas can be due to the fact that we had aries and coron and mars retrograde we were eating um, other things uh, there was toxic energy we were purging uh, plus we had so many planets retrograde that it has taken a toll. So although we'll have Mars direct, we do have Aries and Chiron retrograde, plus the Venus elements of looking after ourselves and nurturing ourselves and, and getting back into alignment. Okay, health, as I mentioned, keep your fluid up. Make sure that you're keeping grounded. You're having enough time to get away from white noise, be that media, be that overload of information. Having some time to unwind. If you have to think about the things you need to, have your time to do such, then it's almost retraining your brain and your emotions to not tune into that. Um, tell yourself that it's okay to give yourself a break. Uh, you, you, again, can get away from white noise and really retrain the brain to disconnect with the nodes being in Gemini, especially near the lunar eclipse in Gemini. It can be a purgatory effect. It is beneficial. It's really looking back, seeing how far you've come in life. Because we did have that so-called sandwich of Venus energy coming through with the moons, we may have indulged a little bit more than usual. Plus, during Mars retrograde, you tend to go to the go-to food. Uh, we can be eating more meat during that time. We can get to a point where we feel very sluggish and unmotivated. Again, the fact that the sacral chakra is coming up and the solar plexus is going to give us an opportunity to both check our diet, uh, getting nutritious food into us, feeling more in alignment, even if it's however we're eating, we are going to feel more energetic. But eating the food groups of those areas, both yellow food groups, orange food groups, um, green as well. And again, you can do the meditation. Uh, fluid, obviously, for the crown chakra as Neptune and Pisces goes direct, both your ability to... Um, get all the downloads that you're getting. When I say downloads, it's a bit like sometimes our brain becomes a rubbish dump and it's got this overload of information to the point it shuts down. So with our clarity, meaning water, uh, our mind is much crisp, more crystal clear to be able to, like a, a massive computer, be able to decipher all the information. During this time, it does make it a little bit more difficult, but just trust the process, keep grounded. Home providing you are 
Uh, some of you could be doing renovations at home. Some of you could be having changes linking to home and you haven't had time to settle down yet or you're about to move into that. Also shifts in employment, but that can be through you personally choosing to do such. But there's a lot of things that are going on for your sign but you are gonna have a lot more energy uh, by the 21st. You could take a very traditional standpoint on a situation on the 21st. So just be mindful, you know, it, it could be that you feel very firm on your belief and, uh, you know, maybe look at a situation positively, but some of you, it could accidentally be negatively. So just pay attention to either side of that date. Okay, with your work, let's look at that. Now, you've got so many aspects on your chart this month that are absolutely glorious. After the full moon in Taurus, which was hitting your 11th house placement, moving into this month, you do have a lot of 7th house placement. So subjects to do with finances, subjects to do with where you're going with your career sector, who you're interconnecting with, um, changes potentially happening in the employment front what's an outdated way of doing something uh maybe you might hear of somebody leaving a job uh you potentially even if you are employed you could actually get a promotion so there are beautiful aspects occurring we also have with mars going direct you will have more energy to deal with uh your work life uh to, to push forward to seek employment if you're needing to seek employment but to actually tackle tasks in your day-to-day -day life with the monetary aspect of things with the nodes where they were previously in cancer and capricorn you may have felt like you were pushing a wheelbarrow uphill and because we still have saturn jupiter and pluto which are in the house of capricorn it is hitting your 10th house placement and it does link to seventh house, which is marriages, contracts, partnerships. There has been a lot of changes in this area where you've been trying to pull them all together. And this is a time where some really miraculous, beautiful things can start happening, especially with the conjunction points with Jupiter, um, tying up loose ends, paying off debts, uh, maybe looking at policies and finances, uh, recouping things, um, money getting back on track. I would also say, um, some of you are maybe needing to repair certain things and, and outgrowing certain, um, you know, your money can be going towards maybe replacing goods for your home for, uh, you know, especially with the moon and Taurus, um, especially with privacy related dynamics with you guys moving forward. You're really wanting to have that nurturing Cancerian abode that is very um, private, very personal, very you in your own vibration. So money can go to those areas tying up expenses connected to home. Also looking at the bigger picture of where you're going into 2021 and what you're going to do with those things. It could be taxation policies, finances, buying new items for your home and your abode. Uh, you could be um, spending money on those areas. Now, when the sun enters Sagittarius, uh, what you've been doing, you could have more self-esteem and really shining bright like a diamond uh, to the point where, again, uh, it could be very beneficial for you. Just be careful of ego because it is sun energy, uh, but you could have some really wild ideas that can usher in some new income and employment through your hopes, dreams, and endeavors. It also could be a sidekick business, something that you just stumble upon, but definitely offers can be coming your way. For those of you that are unemployed, this is a perfect time to network, a perfect time to think outside the box. Uh, you know, money could come to you in windfalls from unlikely places. It also could be government payments. Uh, also, if something's broken, you could um, be getting an insurance claim and money back connected to that. But it is a really great time to be looking outside the box, um, connecting in with the future, moving forward, what you're going to do with your finances due to the current circumstances in the collective and really shifting your thought patterns into what you can do to generate income. But I do feel it to be very beneficial, especially by the Gemini moon. Uh, really looking back from where you were before to where you are now, you will see leaps and bounds of changes. Just keep putting your best foot forward and you're going to get the best out of this transit. Now, as I mentioned, uh, with your area of family and home, you being Cancerian, home is deeply important. Home is where the heart is, so to speak. Uh, you are also the home. Um, I was mentioning in a previous video, I'm pretty sure it was a previous video, uh, notions of dreams, which we are going to discuss inside of this video 
for you personally connected to astrology as well as psychic energy with home uh let me have a look at your chart what do we have in cancer's chart well you directly are the zodiac of home we also have venus and libra which does link to your home environment now much of the month where libra is placed there can be a lot of balancing that's occurring and the ninth there could be some contention there due to the fact that both venus and aries are making an opposition so try and be patient around that time you may not be seeing eye to eye or you might might not feel as grounded you might be very conflicted wounds can come up during this day and definitely with fifth house placement if you have children and things to that degree subjects to do with that can come up around that situation um some of you also uh maybe have been traveling quite far uh, maybe looking at that time about moving again because you do have fourth house placement and what that bigger picture is what, what what finances will be required for that to occur this can be even travel a holiday and making plans with the eighth house placement now when it does come to home because we do have Aries and Chiron retrograde until December the 15th 15th double check yes people still will be coming from an egoic place so communicating with people should ease up as mercury goes direct from the third beyond due to the fact it's in scorpio you can really be working through those things and not have the energy for bs so to speak as mars goes direct you will have more ability to you might might feel more stable in your base chakra your home related dynamic to balance the home out it is a great time during the full moon in Taurus to do a house clearing it's also a great time to do a clearing per new moon to re-energize the new energy that you want to come into your life and manifest those things in very similar to the laws of attraction with the root chakra if you do feel especially being a crab sign your home where you are you within your own life you need to feel psychically protected you're very private in general um thus it's really mirroring the scorpionic energy uh, needing to have that element of mis uh you know mystery and and privacy so you're going to be deeply attracted to those and people who directly respect those subject matters so if you do feel there's certain individuals that don't belong in a social circle in your life you will find that at this time you will be very protective very cautious about what you say to people especially with the nodes in gemini being in your 12th house you're looking at it thinking no i'm not going to do that because i know how this occurs it's really protecting yourself and surrounding yourself with the positive energies that resonate more like you and by the time we do reach december we will have both Saturn and Jupiter moving into Aquarius which will link into romance children and luck and new new rebirth so to speak so with that being Aquarius really connecting in with like-minded individuals uh, learning very karmic lessons and knowing what does resonate with you and what doesn't and this is really cementing it in the month of November what those things are and what you're going to need to do to move forward in fact so there can potentially be some push-pull energies needing to psychically protect yourself with these things uh, a lot of accountability as well because Saturn's in Capricorn um, you know trying to um, really nut through some of the miscommunication things people may be may be being shady towards you and not showing you the truth and then information coming later and almost projecting back at you again with Aries and Chiron it does make sense try and have patience with it it is going to pass with the Aries and Chiron energy it should ease up as we move into December and look although we really do have um, some very interesting aspects happening at the end of the year I'm going to try and get these videos done so that you guys are well and truly prepared it can be a very emotional time moving into the new year due to what has occurred on the collective or you know with the collective uh, where this can be an interesting Christmas and New Year's depending on what you celebrate and really taking space uh, be mindful that at the end of the year we are having a full moon in cancer so this is really tying out that karmic two and a half year cycle for you guys uh, and just take stock you know of all the hard work you've done everything you've achieved and how far you've come and be so so very proud of yourself for all you've achieved 
Now on to your love life and very similar to what I was mentioning with home it's it's very closely linking. I do feel that most of this month subjects to do with marriages, contracts, partnerships with your seventh and your fifth house placement is coming up. You are either going to be be it your single little couple looking at the past with Aries um, in Chiron and Mars and Aries um, hitting your wound sector of the 10th house you know the work you put in and this can be interconnections as well how people viewed you your reputation connecting to your connections really trying to turn over that new leaf and bring everything together uh, we all are perfectly imperfect we all do the very best we can within our capacity and the tools that we have sometimes circumstances will directly transform us due to those transits I'm seeing with your chart of the seventh house placement, you, you will have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders and it has been very tiring. So tense shoulders and emotions to that degree, um, maybe keeping things very private, trying to sum them up in your mind with the nodes being in Gemini, which is what you're moving towards and we all collectively are, your north node for the next two years is now Gemini, which is Mercury, thinking about what you said, maybe micromanaging it, I do feel with the heart chakra clearing this month, you're going to be doing a lot of healing, linking in with your marriages, contracts, partnerships. I do feel as Mercury goes direct, you may be more direct towards people, point blank zero. Uh, you're going to feel more stable in your assessment of situations of what was hidden from you, be it inside yourself or towards scenarios where people were not showing their true colours. I'm also feeling with Mars and Aries going direct, you're going to have a more energy to be proactive in your life and, and be um, more balanced and energetic. You can become more passionate. Um, some of your warmth will come back and that can be you feeling very vivacious and wishing to be intimate. Uh, especially with Aries hitting the solar plexus, you will know what you want to co-create. And with the fifth house placement, this is a rebirth within connections. Uh, be it your coupled or single, you'll be moving fiercely towards what you're wanting and what you're desiring. You're going to keep your cards close to your chest, but you're going to really want to get to the point with the sun moving into Sagittarius and Venus entering Scorpio, very protective of who you love. Uh, and you know, wanting to have some private time with that person and moving into that um, vibration at a very high level. When Neptune goes direct, you may wish to go on holiday with these individuals or travel towards this person. Um, it could be taking a relationship to the next level. This can include uh, brand new babies um, and e even rebuilding, you know, moving, getting a home, uh, going on a holiday together, potentially a honeymoon, uh, looking at all those things that you want to take to the next level, but what you need to leave behind. Now, those of you, if you were trying to meditate upon a situation that was very toxic and you were trying to let it go, um, it can link back to your childhood, especially since moon energy always is family. We have root chakra here at the moment with the Capricorn energy going on. So our, our demeanor inside our lives of what we were supposed to be responsible for, uh, the karmic lessons linking to that, maybe our belief systems of what relationships have been to date and what we feel they are point blank zero. Now, we, not one person on the planet has experienced um, this new energy coming in, moving into 2021, which is really, really exciting, uh, which most of us will be super excited to hear. The energy of Aquarius inside of Saturn and Jupiter is going to be tremendously healthy for connections. So if a lot of us have been saying, look, people just don't commit, people don't connect, with the energy of Aquarius there, it's binding connections and they're more conducive with love um, and intimacy. So it will be a very beautiful way of having it. It's more stable. It's starting from the base up, which is root chakra and um, very protective and nurturing. It's a different way. It's still a Saturn energy, uh, but it's the different unique way of bringing everything together. Some of you may be trying to do such with groups and people around you and, you know, bridging that gap. But as we say, it takes two to tango and in our interconnections, 
there can be some contention at the moment because we still will have Aries and Chiron retrograde. But for those of you who have had crosswise and things to that degree in connections, you'll find that there's opportunities this month to bridge that gap and to work out what to take with you and what to leave behind. Now your hopes and dreams and Neptune going direct. I mentioned crown chakra, psychic downloads, Gemini in the 12th. Um, and I don't mean the 12th day of the month, I mean the crown chakra, 12th house. You're going to be moving towards all the things that your hopes and dreams are. Please, this month, don't get stuck in your head, especially with the transit over the next two, two and a half years with the nodes being in Gemini. A lot of things that you think are going to be as important to the people you love. So please don't feel inside of your crabby shell that you can't share those things. The importance of surrounding yourself with beautiful people that love and respect you and really do worship the ground you walk on, that your viewpoints are important. Your voice, your throat chakra is important. Uh, we do look at the 12th house of, of, as the house of meditation, of spirituality and awakening. Uh, it can also be very disruptive at times, the 12th house from for a psyche. With Neptune going direct, it'll ease it off by the 29th. But the nodes being in Gemini are still hitting your 12th house placement. Uh, it's There's going to be an eclipse, so you could have a real large light bulb moment. You also need to understand that your hopes, your dreams... Um, your psyche of what it's showing you is a way that your mind is trying to make sense of all the things. So sometimes it can be intuition. Um, again, it's your throat chakra coming through in your mind. Listen to what your feelings are. They're very important. Also imagery and your guides directly communicating with you at the moment are trying to help you move through. So if you're having these really funky things happen with the crown chakra activation, you could be getting channeled messages from the other side very much from your loved ones who have passed over and things to that degree. And during Neptune retrograde, you do tend to find what we call the realm being very thin. So with that, we have the 3D, 4D, 5D and above and below we can be sort of in and out of sleep and getting channeled messages. Sometimes we can have nightmares during these things. So we do need to protect the home environment, which I mentioned in the home domain of this video. Great time, as I mentioned, to clear the house energy, um, drink fluid, use crystals to protect yourself, get yourself anchored in moving into 2021. If you are needing guidance during the month, obviously drop me a line. The link directly below for the website for bookings is there. If you need to ask a general question during the videos, I always have super chat there um, where you can hit me up for a very uh, quick question and I can help support you on the channel. Anything other than that that you're wanting me to cover, always write a comment in the box and I can integrate it into the content that I provide for you guys. Separate to your hopes and dreams, um, I do feel with dream state energy, again, you could land your dream job, your dream love interest. There is a lot of great aspects, new social endeavors, new um, pastimes are coming through. Although we've had the heavy Capricorn energy, you are going to really enjoy the following year moving through. And we are preparing for that, but we need to come to terms with what has happened over the last 2.5 years and well beyond that with the heavy Capricorn energy, that a lot of the work that you put in is going to reap rewards and it's trusting the process and that, but really trust your psychic downloads clear your home energy and prepare for this transit. Now, as I mentioned, the eclipse in Gemini is hitting the 12th house. So during this time, um, pay attention to where you were in May during this year. The nodes moved in May. They are connecting in with your um, 12th house placement. And then they also do link to communication, Gemini energy. So it's both third and sixth house um, is Mercury energy. Uh, but there's also the frequency of home-related dynamics coming up due to the fact it's moon energy. A lot of what can come up is where you were stuck. You were stuck and thinking something. You were feeling a certain way. Potentially, again, throat chakra activation of um, communication information and those things where they suddenly take a turn and shift you in a different direction. Um, also, if you feel you have been acting accountable in all areas, 
uh, things will bode very well. There is a, a change as well coming in that area. It can be something you've learnt. It can be, again, schooling, education, upskilling. It also can be um, a lot of hustle and bustle, local energy. You feeling that you are going a bit crazy, having to go back and forward, back and forward. Um, overload of information, cross wires. Just look back to May though, synchronistically very separately. You may have been one sort of way at one point and you have gone through a deep transformation. It's like a deep cycle in a washing machine really. On fast spin, might I add, um, in a front loader because we all know how fast those go. So looking at that, look where you were in May and look how far you've come. Take stock of it, get prepared. A lot of synchronistic events that happen around this time, either inside your mind or separately. It is the house of hidden enemies. It is a social responsibility house. It's a um, place where you can find tools inside your mind to deal and tackle with certain circumstances. Even not speaking sometimes can be a tool and a mechanism to avoid conflict, but looking at how much you've transformed and looking at how it did or didn't aid you. It also can be um, very spiritual in nature. It is Gemini energy though. It can be some of your pastimes that you used to do recreationally and now where you are now, is it healthy? Is it a lower frequency? Only you can know. And you know, what those transformations are gonna be, how we directly deal with stress, how we deal with our emotions um, to transform that, uh, what we're doing with our exercise, for instance, to de-stress ourselves. Uh, the overload of information, how we download it mentally and psychologically to process it and understand it, but also being very open to hearing other people's perspectives and being a student. Looking back to this, there may have been, um, again, a lot of things linking to home coming up. Where are you now versus where you were before? And how is your psychology based on that transformation now that you're here now? Some of you during this time of the new moon in Gemini, which is a lunar eclipse, over the next six months, you can have deep transformations that can really transform your psychology surrounding home, um, what socialization is, uh, how you can be inside of connections. It's really going to shift. So I hope this helped. Um, I will see you on the other side of this month. I'd love to get your feedback as to how this video resonated, if this was helping, if you want me to tap into any other energy, anything you want to update me by, or a question, and I will see you for the live tarot readings um, during the month. It should be in the next two days. Here's hoping, maybe even the first day of the month, we'll see how organized I can be. And it is for your romance reads and they will be psychic channel messages with the Tarot and Oracle. I will select ruins. I'm happy to answer super chat questions. So if you haven't subbed, please sub and you'll get the notification. Keep an eye on the community tab and wait for all the additional content. As we move into 2021, I will be providing weekly reports. So I'm doing my best to get everything as organized as possible so that I can both do live sessions, videos with Tarot, um, Twin Flame updates, Moon Energy, Astrology, and your Deep Transit Astrology forecast. Thanks so much, guys, for all my loyal subscribers. I deeply love you guys to bits and have a great month, Cancer.